We're talking about high eyes today. Why do we love fun so much and not the facts? Find out in a second. Go eyes, go eyes. All right, eyes. I'm gonna give you a quick refresher from one of our previous videos from that 10,000 foot view. We're gonna talk about descriptors, give you six words to describe high eyes, and one watch word, things we have to be mindful of if that high eye gets under stress, strain, and lack of sleep. We're gonna give you some of the things that eyes like and enjoy, and gonna give you ways to motivate our high eyes today. Eyes are outgoing, people-oriented folks. Never met a stranger, love to have fun. So think about Robin Williams, think about Martin Luther King Jr., those kinds of folks, super inspiring types. So our first word to describe eyes is inspiring, inspiring. And there's lots of ways that inspiring can look. Again, if you talk about Robin Williams, he inspired a generation of comics, one of the most improvisational comedians maybe ever. And then if you take Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who inspired a nation with the civil rights movement, his speeches drew thousands and thousands of people. He did it with passion and purpose. So inspiration doesn't have to be funny or really serious. It can be kind of both or somewhere in between. Eyes are also influencing. They want you to feel like they do. They want you to think like they do. So an example of that might be a high eye friend, or this could be me because I am a high eye. I'm a hundred on the hundred scale of being a high eye. I call myself a flaming high eye. Can't get much higher than me. I'll come home and I'll be talking to my son. I'll be like, oh dude, this movie was the best movie I've ever seen. We got to do popcorn. I'm just gonna go, go, we got it right now. Okay, you have no idea what I just said. And really, I don't even know what I just said, but I was super excited. I was talking about the new Avengers movie. He needs to go. I'll buy the popcorn, we're going today. Now you didn't understand any of that, but eyes get so excited about any and everything when it comes to influencing others to think and feel like they do. Eyes are impressionable, impressionable. The last thing that they did, saw, or ate is the best thing they've ever done, seen, or eaten. So I could have had you know, Casablanca for tacos last night here in, in Utah and be like, oh, dude, those are the best tacos ever. I mean, they were just, the juice was just, ooh, and I had to wipe my face 30 times. It was great. But then I just said the same thing about the burritos I had in Nashville three weeks ago. So eyes are always that top of mind. What's the, what's the most recent thing that's happened to them or, or they've done or they've seen or they've eaten? Because that's what sticks out in their mind as the best. Eyes are interactive, interactive. They always have to be involved with things and be around other people. So in terms of someone who's at workplace and they want to be moved to a remote workplace, that's someone who's more task oriented. That's a D or C kind of thing. And I doesn't want to leave the workplace because that's where all the people are. That's where all the fun is. I mean, the coffee, you know, the coffee pot talk, the water cooler chatter, that's a part of that culture. And that's part of what gives them energy on a daily basis. And at home, if you have a high eye child, they're going to be involved with all kinds of stuff. I mean, they might be on the prom committee and whatever else. They're going to be involved in lots of great things as long as there are people involved. And so what's the best way to discipline a high eye child, the most effective way? Put them in the bathroom where they have water and a toilet, so they're going to be fine. But take away that cell phone. What does that do to them? It isolates them. Isolation is the enemy of an eye. Getting them to work independently on projects, <laughs> okay. putting them in a cubicle stuck by themselves, <laughs> they're going to start crying. Keeping them around other people where they can feed off of everyone else's energy, that's music to an eye's ears. Eyes are impressive. Big loud voices. Long dramatic pauses. They embrace the silence. With their clothing, an eye is going to tend to stick out. They're going to want to say, look at me, look at me. So for the guys, it's those big class rings. You know, that impressive looking tie walking around, the crazy looking stuff on their shoes, the fancy socks, all that kind of stuff with like Tabasco on them or superheroes, anything that's going to say, look at me. For the ladies, the big bangled earrings, you know, that stick way down here, clunky jewelry, you know, the super crazy sequin shoes, anything again that's going to draw attention to themselves. Unlike a high S who's more reserved and doesn't want that attention, man, bring it on for the eyes. Anything they can do to say, look at me, look at me, they love it. And then finally, eyes are involved. So much like interactive, that involvement means that they're going to be into everything and about everything. Again, as long as people are involved. So that's key club, that's prom committee, that's homecoming committee, that's the chorus, that's the after school groups, anything that has to do with people. Again, they're gonna feed off of that energy. 
Now, granted, eyes might not be crazy involved when they get there in terms of being productive because they're going to be too busy chatting with all their friends. And, oh, did you think what's happening? And all this garbled, babble nonsense. But they still love being a part of that. And then they'll, they'll come in and they'll do their little bits and pieces of help. But they're all about the people that are involved there. So the more the merrier when it comes to people for high eyes. So those are our six words that describe high eyes. Now for our watchword. Now, eyes, I'm one of you. You know, we're super creative people, outside the box thinkers, loving on everybody. But sometimes our watchword, we can be illogical. We can be illogical. My high C wife, super task oriented will send me to the grocery store with 10 items on a list, okay? I'm the CEO of a medical billing company. I can get 10 items from the grocery store, right? <clears throat> Not always. Oh, it's so sad. So she'll have the grocery list out. She'll have the items in order by where they appear by aisle in the store, and she'll have them listed with the number of the aisle. I can't mess this up. I've got this. I got this. So I look at my list, the first item, celery. Piece of cake, right? So I come over here, grab my cart. I'm going to the produce section. I'm reaching over. Let's see, I have celery, celery. So, so celery's right there. I go to grab the celery, and then, oh, Bob, hey, dude, what's going on, man? Oh, yeah, we're playing golf Saturday? Okay, I got a second guy. You get a third. Okay, so I'll make us four, right? Okay, Saturday, three o'clock. Is that good? Okay, all right. So I take my cart, and I'm going for peanut butter. All right, so I get my peanut butter. I'm going around. I get my peanut butter. I do my stuff, pack it up, get home, open up the bags, unpacking everything, and my wife says, where's the celery? I know what. I, ugh, no, I was there. I mean, I was in the aisle. I walked over there. I was reaching for the celery. Bob, it was Bob's fault. He did this to me. It's his fault. No, it's not Bob's fault. It's mine. Eyes suffer from SOS, shiny object syndrome. We're distracted by the lit. Oh, dude, are those mountains? I don't even, dude, that, there's like snow up there and it's, it's, it's October. That's crazy. Oh, sorry, I was in the middle of video. Anyway, eyes can be distracted by very simple things. That shiny object syndrome happens to us all the time. So we can be a little illogical. It doesn't make sense that we go to the grocery store with just 10 items on a list and we only get nine. But that's what happens to us because we're such little social creatures, we get distracted. We're not intentionally trying to cause you problems, all you high D and high C people. We're just trying to make it in this crazy, crazy world. All right, so now that we've left the land of squirrels and our high eye illogicalness, which is not a word, but I love it, we're gonna talk about what eyes like, okay? What kind of gets them charged up and woo, excited about the day. So eyes like to be liked, that's the first thing. Eyes just wanna be liked by everybody. We don't have a lot of really, really close friends as eyes. We have tons of acquaintances because we get bored with just one person, but oh, this person likes to play board games. Oh, I got a paintball buddy over here. And oh, oh, over here, I got a guy who plays racquetball. Oh, but my golfing buddies are over here. So we're always kind of going and going and going. And our C's and our D's are like, why can't you just stay on the same page and just, don't you have this little small friend group? No, we're all over the place all the time. So we like to be liked. Eyes like to express their ideas and their feelings. This whole right side of the graph, when you hear me talk about the right side and the left side of the graph, I's and S's, our supportive types, inspiring types, live on the right side of the graph, people-oriented. And then our D's and C's, our dominance and our cautious types, live on that left-hand side of the graph. And so when we talk about I's and S's, we are all about feelings. Feelings all the time. How does that make this person feel? How do I feel about things? It's not about the what's and the why's and the hard and fast and the black and white. There's a lot of gray that lives on this side with the I's and S's. So in our world, we just want people to like us, okay? but we want to express our feelings to people. So if I'm leaving a meeting as a CEO, I'll say, well, how'd y'all feel about that presentation? A DNC might say, what did y'all think about this presentation? And it's a subtle thing, but it's an important one. So from a feeling standpoint, if I'm in the workplace and I'm putting on some kind of presentation or workshop or retreat, if I want my I's and S's to be involved, I've got to have some emotionally charged content something that's gonna get in touch with our feelings. It can't just be about the facts and here are the spreadsheets and here are the performers and here's where we're going in the future and 13.7% growth. That's great, but it's not gonna help our I's and S's. I've gotta get some passion and story and drama behind that. And so to do that, put an eye in charge of that process. Let them handle that presentation. Let them be in charge of the PowerPoint because they're gonna inject all that passion and emotion, which is really gonna connect with those folks on the right side. Eyes like being in front of a group. So this video for me is a challenge because yes, I see you out there in, in YouTube land, hello, but you're not here with me. And so I really struggle with that energy because when I'm on the stage, I'm speaking to hundreds or thousands of people, which I often do, 
I get the energy back and I get to see people's expressions and I get to see that passion and see that, oh, the light bulb comes on. And so for us as eyes, we want, like to be in front of tons of people. What others find, oh my gosh, never put me in front of a stage of other people, much less talking to two people, give that to us all day long, okay? We make a living off of what you fear the most. That's, we have t-shirts from our National Speakers Association that say that. We make a living on what you're deathly afraid of. And so the more people, the merrier. I am talking to you. Hopefully I'm talking to millions of people by the time you see this video, but I am talking to you right now as one person and you do matter, but I want you in the room with me. Eyes like surprises. You know, the birthday cake when you get to work on your desk surprise, not the flat tire on the way to work surprise. And so as a C or a D, oh my gosh, don't give them surprises. They like to have that regimented plan all the time, every day, doing the same thing. Got to get stuff done all the time. Man, shoot, the eyes love that flexibility, love that spontaneity. Oh, you got me tickets to the movie I wanted to go see? Oh, thank you so much. D would be like, you got me tickets? I can't watch that this week. I'm at work or I got this stuff to do. I'm planning on cutting the grass. Don't give me that stuff. You got to let me know ahead of time. Totally different mindset and different idea. But bring on those surprises. Eyes love them. Eyes love lots of fun activities. In a classroom setting, if you have a high eye child, the worst thing that they can hear is, welcome class. Today we're going to come in and we're going to sit down and read these four pages and answer these questions. I mean, shoot them in the face and give them a root canal at the same time. They can't stand that stuff. They like labs, they like interaction, they like moving around, group work, all that kind of good stuff. So they like lots of fun activities. So when you're doing meetings, if you're in the business world and you are an eye in a meeting, you know that you're craving that fun. So management needs to focus on that and say, okay, let's put on some music or throw out some candy or do something to kind of lighten the mood or to break the monotony of meetings over and over again because eyes will just get really, really drained by the monotony of the same thing over and over again. What motivates a high eye? It's pretty simple. It's recognition, okay? which is very public. If I'm trying to recognize someone, I'm going to call them up to the front of the room. I'm going to say, Sally, you're the best salesperson we've ever had. You're awesome. You're up 30% this month. Y'all clap for her. Let's go. Woo! Let's go, Sally. You would have won with that. And they get really excited, okay? But notice how I backed away. I mean, Sally's still way over there somewhere. I'm putting the spotlight on her. It's very public. Everyone's clapping for her. The spotlight's on her. So she's gathering up all this recognition like a sponge. They feed off of that. They would rather have as an eye all of this public praise and pats on the back than they are driven by more income, than they are driven by more plaques. Okay? That's more of a demotivation than it is and eye motivation. Eye is motivated by the cheers and the celebrations and all that attention on them. So if you want to motivate your eye, pats on the back or super public praise is also really, really outstanding. So high eyes, that wraps it up for you today. Or if you're not a high eye, now you know why we're so crazy. <laughs> and if you really want to take a deep dive, you want to purchase that assessment because an assessment is going to help you transform the way you communicate, reduce conflict when you're working with I's or D's that we've already talked about before. It's going to help you understand your spouse, your significant other, a parent, a sibling, a coworker, and really improve every part of that communicative style that you have inside you that you're needing to adapt to another person, but you don't know who they are yet. So understand first yourself, then others, then adapt. Check out the link below. Thanks.